right, so it's been about a year since I've really wanted to do some wicking barrels and I'm finally getting to it. I'm gonna do up five 50 gallon drums. Uh, these are gonna be full size, I'm not cutting them in half. I'm gonna do three plastic and two metal ones. After, you know, cutting into two of the metal ones, I realized that they are fairly difficult to deal with. They're sharp and you gotta protect them and they will rust. So I think the plastic are a choice. I'm gonna be piecing these together with supplies that I already have. I'm gonna be repurposing some large charcoal filters and just using different things I have laying around. You can be quite creative with the process. There's a number of ways going about it and I'm just gonna show you how I'm doing it. And so these tops have already been cut off and are long gone. Otherwise I'd probably be using them, uh, you know, for my division between the soil and the water. A lot of people actually cut these in half and then you get two containers but these ones have already been cut into. Also, two of them already have uh, drain ports near the bottom of the barrel, which is lower than you'd want them for a drain port for a wicking barrel. Uh, so that is determining uh, kind of how I go about this build as well. This is some poly felt here. It came off of the charcoal filter. So that's going to be used in place of landscape fabric. Also very good wicking ability. Roots actually really love this kind of stuff. A fine nylon mesh also came out of the charcoal filter. Peat moss for free. A charcoal filter galvanized steel casing. And so I'm gonna be cutting out a ring of that and placing it inside here on top of these two gallon buckets here and having a hole in the middle for my wicking leg here. I will put the, the poly felt on top of the metal mesh and uh, there will be a bit of a space between the water level and the top of my soil level here. Just a bit of air space. Um, that'll keep the sludge down as well. And But the middle will be the wicking leg so it'll wick up from there. Gonna do that to all of them so the water flows nice and easy. They can get a little bit closer now before they're kind of hitting and overlapping. I'm just using this green line here. It's nice and rubbery and so it seals quite well. You know, instead of a through hole, I do have some through holes, but this is simpler. I can just yank the thing out, clean it if it does ever get clogged. Trace the inside. So I can do that to all three now. I'll make the felt, you know, extra big so that it kind of kind of folds up on the edges a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna get the other two up to this stage here. First, I'm gonna go uh, pick some pickling cukes, though. I'll show you that real quick. I will just save these in the fridge for a couple of days till I get another couple handfuls and then we'll do some uh, fermented dills. I could just get lost in the garden though so easily. Look at the peaches and delphiniums. Oh, the pink astilbe's just starting to open up. Got all three to the stage now. I'm putting this uh, poly felt in now. Plug these so the perlite or sand doesn't get through. So I just cut three rings here that are going to go you know, around the inside of the pot. So I'm just rolling this up like this. Ah, I'm having a fun time doing this so far. It's going to stop a fair bit of particles, I think, from going through. I think it's going to work pretty good, this stuff. You know, some of the industrial landscaping uh, materials, they actually do have like a felt like this. <laughs> Beauties. All right, so it's the next day, and I did a few changes this morning. Just put a longer piece of pipe on here, had that size on. 
Um, this just gives me the option to um, have more water in the bottom and you know it can go right up into the main bed of soil if I want you know to get them started wicking well. They have that wicking foot or leg in there so technically it should be okay even with a bit of an airspace is ideal so I can just turn this down to wherever I want and so it's just adjustable. So one other thing I realized though about this design by doing this exterior adjustable piece here is that it is below the um, the airspace. So I could just put another uh, hole right here for an air hole, uh, but I don't really want to put more holes in the basin of my container here. So I'm going to add these filling ports. Well, they'll serve as two purposes. And it's a good idea to cut the bottom at an angle like that, just so it doesn't uh, clog up and the water can just flow out. I've got these marked. This is my soil level here. And then there's an airspace, right? And that's where my water starts. Well, it is adjustable there. So I'm going to drill a few holes in here to bring air down into that air chamber and it can also be used as a filling port. Got a block of coconut coir in here expanding. I also have all this charcoal here. This is from the filter and uh, so this is just pure charcoal. You don't want to use the uh, pelletized stuff in the garden or in a wicking bed but it has a binding agent in it but you can use some of this if it looks like this. This is just pure charcoal. And so I'm gonna wash it off in this big barrel here just to get some of the dust off of it. Using some of this mixed in with the bottom layer to help prevent uh, the soil from going anaerobic. So I'm gonna have about an inch airspace. Got a set of holes that way and then set just a little bit lower. Okay. <laughs> These have a bit of a curve, kind of match the barrel already. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm gonna mix some charcoal in with my coconut coir, and I decided to. Uh, I'm gonna use the mixture as well for the leg. All right, so I'm gonna use all my scrap pieces uh, just to fill the wicking pot pack it down just a little bit make sure it doesn't sink too much kind of have another wick there in the middle I mean this stuff wicks well also you can see the mixture there with the charcoal in it it's gonna help break it up kind of acts like a perlite I think I'm gonna flare this out so it lays flat make sure that that level of this substrate is is high enough and that it doesn't sink and has a little you know air gap there I do want a continuous wicking draw <laughs> that's important so a little bit higher if anything I think if it mounds up just a little bit we'll be safe I get that all flared out flat I think I'm gonna have enough for three shovels in each one Okay, two more to go. Clouds and thunders standing in my way. I must try to figure it out anyway. Still need to get to the rock wall. That's next on my list after I finish these wicking barrels. And this is what happens when you're so in love with gardening, your parking lot becomes a garden and your vehicles move further and further away down back up the lane there. So I'm gonna start mixing up my soil and filling my barrels there. I'm gonna put you on time-lapse. Right now would be a wonderful time to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you're enjoying the video, thank you kindly. Coming up, I'm gonna be showing you what I'm gonna be planting in these self-watering barrels. So stay tuned for that. Clouds and thunders standing in my way. I must try to figure it out. The animal over way. here. Buddy, I got seeds planted there. Songs of worries travel with the storm. 
So I got aged horse manure, uh, pro mix, like recycled pro mix and glacial rock dust all mixed up there. Got plenty here. It's fine if there's some extra. So this is turning into a bit of a lasagna wicking barrel now I'm thinking, cause I have been reading about that, you know, doing different layers, uh, putting some like straw, wood chips and manure. Um, manure in with the wood chips, it uh, will add that necessary nitrogen so because the wood chips lock up some nitrogen they need some they suck it up they absorb it and so if you add some extra nitrogen then there'll be you know enough for plants as well cow manure that's uh, mixed with straw already and i'm gonna scavenge for some wood chips so these wood chips are gonna add some beneficial fungi and it's like some mycelium in there and just make the whole wicking barrel more alive there is a red wiggler in here as well So I got the first layer in there, right, with the cocoa coir mixed with some charcoal, and it's only about an inch thick there. I'm gonna add this second layer of the straw, wood chip, and cow manure. A couple sticks and leaves, and just a little bit of native dirt in there as well. Ah, maybe five, I got a lot of depth here. Okay, we're gonna fill the other two. Just gonna put a layer of straight manure just to make sure that there's enough nitrogen on that mixture of, of raw materials, somewhat raw. Got half of my mixed soil uh, moved over here. That's probably gonna be enough for all three of these at least, maybe the other two as well. Of cooch grass little bits of them that I was pulling out constantly the whole time this whole process was going so I think I got it somewhat clean I'm sure there might be a couple little sprouts in here but just because I mined this peat moss out of a field Adjust this down. It's blowing out. Soak this a little bit more and see if that, you know, keeps draining out. And I know it's all really soaked. I must try to figure it out alone. Yeah, I must try to figure it out. 